Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to talk about something I think a lot of us can relate to. Art fear. As you can see from the title, I'm attempting something that honestly terrifies me a bit, which is doodling in my creative journal. Drawing has never been my strong suit and even simple doodles can feel like a real challenge. But today, I'm going to face that fear head on. If you've been following my creative journaling journey, you know I'm usually all about stickers and stamps. Usually, I rely on my trusty stickers, washi tapes, stencils, and stamps to decorate my journal because they are easy to use and guarantee a cute result. Who else can relate to that? But this time, I'm stepping out of my comfort zone and pushing myself to learn how to doodle. I want to challenge myself and show you that even those of us with art fear can learn to doodle with the right resources and a bit of courage. To help me on this journey, I'll be using three beginner-friendly doodle books. First, we have How to Draw Almost Every Day, an illustrated source book, and How to Doodle the Complete Guide, both by Camo, along with the idea book, Text and Illustration by Igloo Dining. These books are perfect for beginners like me who need a bit of guidance to get started. Let's start with How to Draw Almost Every Day by Camo. It has super cute, simple illustrations with easy-to-follow steps. The pros are definitely the variety of illustrations and how it encourages daily drawing practice. The step-by-step -step instructions are great for nervous beginners like me. A small downside is that some drawings might look intimidating at first glance like drawing of people characters so some steps could use more detail. So you might need to build up courage for the more complex designs. Here, I'm sharing a quick flip through. Next is the How to Doodle the Complete Guide. This one is full of kawaii style doodles which are just adorable. What I like about this book is that it starts with basic shapes, which makes it less scary for us beginners, then builds complexity gradually, which helps build confidence. It also focuses on everyday objects. But like the first book, some of the more detailed doodles can be a bit intimidating if you're just starting out.
what I love about both camo books is the index pages at the back, which lets you quickly find the object you want to draw, so it is so convenient. Lastly, we have the idea book, text and illustration by Igloo Dining. It's more idea-based than step-by-step, -step, so it's great for sparking creativity. But some designs might also look intimidating for absolute beginners. So today, I'm challenging myself to doodle about the pizza date I had with friends. I'm nervous but I'm going to trust the process and use inspiration from these books to help me. Let's see how this goes. First, let me show you the tools I'll be using. A mechanical pencil, a Unipin fine liner with a 0.1 tip. So, this pen is perfect if you plan to use brush markers or watercolors afterward because it won't smudge when you apply water based media over it due to its waterproof ink. And an eraser from Muji. As you can see, I've already pasted on the page our group photo and the restaurant logo which I cut from the napkin. Now, I'm ready to start with a simple pizza doodle. Let's check if we can find a pizza drawing in the book How to Draw Almost Every Day by Camo. <clears throat> Using the handy index at the back. Perfect, there's one on page 92. As you can see, this page provides step-by-step -step instructions on how to draw a pizza and its toppings. It, it might look so simple, but for absolute beginners like us, this is exactly what we need. I'll start by sketching it out lightly with a pencil first. Using a pencil allows us to make mistakes and easily correct them which is especially helpful when you're not fully confident with your drawing skills. Since we're all total beginners here, let's stick with the pencil first. Once I'm satisfied with the sketch, I'll go over the lines with a fine liner, then erase the pencil marks for a clean, polished look. Some people prefer to go straight in with a pen, skipping the pencil altogether. While this can save time and create more spontaneous bold lines, it does require more confidence and can be a bit riskier. If you make a mistake with a pen, it's hard to fix. But, but it is also a great way to embrace imperfections and let your creativity flow without worrying too much about precision.
Now that the outline is done, let's color the pizza doodle using these Karatake brush markers. I'll try to match the toppings colors, blending reds, greens, and yellows for the cheesy delicious look. Next, let's add a date. There's a similar style in the book, but instead of solid shading, I'm adding a twist by drawing slanted lines with two colors. It adds more creativity to the title. Now I'd like to add a decorative line below the restaurant logo. Let's check the index again to see if the book has any ideas for lines and borders. Looks like there's something on pages 188 and 200. Let's take a look. Here on page 188, I found a simple line design that's perfect. I'm going to follow this one using green and yellow-orange brush markers to tie in with the rest of the color palette. For more emphasis, I'm adding a border around the logo, and I'll shade it with a brown colored pencil to give it a softer, more natural look. So here's a quick journaling tip. When decorating your pages, try to choose a color palette that complements your main elements. It can really tie your whole page together. Here, I'm using red, green, yellow, orange, and brown to match both the pizza illustration and the red color in the restaurant logo.
Below the logo, I'm going to add the word pizza date. To make the lettering stand out, I'll shade it with a red brush marker. Before I start writing my journal entry, I'm adding some lines to the page similar to the ones we saw in the book to create a neat ruled notebook effect. Now that we've finished our doodles, let's write about what happened that day. Using one of my favorite writing pens, a Muji gel pen in black, I'm writing about our fun meetup with friends at Shakey's Magallanes. It's been such a long time since we've seen each other and while we missed the rest of the gang, it was great to finally hang out after so long. We shared lots of laughs, stories, and updates on life just like the old days. There's always something special about reconnecting with good friends. It's like no time has passed at all. Definitely looking forward to our next meetup with everyone. Okay, here's the finished page. Looking at this page, I can see it's far from perfect, but you know what? I'm incredibly proud of it. This page represents so much more than just a pizza date. It's a visual reminder that I face my art fear head on. If you're watching this and thinking, I could never do that, let me tell you, yes, you absolutely can. Remember, I started this video nervous, but with the help of this, beginner-friendly books, and a willingness to be imperfect, I created something meaningful. I hope this video encourages you to take the first step in overcoming your own art fears, especially if you're just starting out. Remember, it's all about enjoying the process and having fun with your creative journey. Before we go, I'd love to hear about your own creative journey, so leave a comment below sharing what creative fear you'd like to overcome. Who knows, maybe we can face our fears together in future videos. Thank you so much for joining me on this scary but exciting journey. Until next time, stay creative, stay courageous, and keep journaling.